the emoji movie comparison is on par with uh, you're as bad as Hitler. Like any <laughs> like when you bust out the emoji movie to to prove a point, you might as well have said, and so did Hitler. <laughs> Hello, and welcome again to Young Geek versus Old Geek. This week we have a controversial topic. We're going to be talking about what is the worst movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, uh, Mac, you're with us. Uh, my name is Mac. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Worst film in the MCU is Spider-Man Homecoming. Mac is the Young Geek, and Thor, you're with us. Hi, my name's Thor, and I'm the older geek. Um, and I'm going to be arguing that Thor Ragnarok is the worst movie in the MCU. Hmm. Neither of you picked um, Iron Man 3? Compared to what uh, Thor did to the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe? No, no, not even close. At least uh, Iron Man 3 fit within the universe. Spider-Man was just there. I'd watch Spider-Man 3 16 times in a row before I watched Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Okay, I, love I, yourself, man. Love yourself. <laughs> I, I, nobody wants Iron Man three. Nobody like uh, we all saw it, right? We all know that it's the worst <laughs> movie in the Marvel Cinematic Dude, Universe. Dude, that little that? kid fucking blew my mind away. He's all so right. awesome. Okay, I'll take right. that kid over the Executioner any day of the week. All right. <laughs> so, um, well, Mac, you won the cost towing. So we're gonna go ahead and start with you. All right, so uh, first off, I'm going to be looking down a lot. I have a list on my phone, so this is a lot of fun. Uh, so first things first, the humor. Spider-Man has always been a really funny character, usually at the very least, and this writing is just terrible. There were several jokes in, when my wife and I saw it in theaters where punchline, pause for effect, dead silence. Uh, next thing is pretty much every character in that movie is written so poorly uh, we're talking things that no sane, rational human would say or situations that are just matter of circumstance. Uh, the story has no real place in the larger MCU. There's no references to future movies, just kind of vaguely referencing past movies. Um, for being a Spider-Man movie, there is a bit too much emphasis on Tony Stark. Uh, Ned felt like a Cisco ripoff from The Flash. Uh, the music was just boring. I can remember nothing about it, and that's kind of par for the course for Marvel, but I should remember something. Uh, same thing can go for the action. Um, the only scene I really liked was the scene with um, the building falling on Peter, and he's like, come on, Peter Parker, come on, Spider-Man, but that was like kind of taken directly from the comics, so that doesn't really count. It wasn't the director's vision. Uh, the post-credit sequence was completely moot because the sequel did nothing with it, uh, did, did you guys know the Shocker was in the movie? Because, um, yeah, he was. He got, like, two scenes. Uh, the shot reverse shot cinematography was boring and dull. Uh, Peter Parker never held a camera, despite that being a huge plot point in a lot of his comics. Um, after he lost, um, his spider suit, the movie got really boring really quick. And as a joke, there was a really noticeable lack of J.K. Simmons as J. Joan Jameson, so... There's that as well. Why Ragnarok is the worst movie. Uh, based on financial records, it cost more than Spider-Man Homecoming and it made less than Spider-Man Homecoming. The plot is horrible and it ruined the Planet Hulk storyline. You will never be able to get that in a standalone movie anymore. The characters are horrible. They wipe out Thor's three best friends in an instant, destroyed, gone. Thor's love interest, Jane Foster, in the comic books for years and years, is done as a joke giveaway. Like, oh, I heard she dumped you. His other potential love interest, Sif, gone, never seen. Thor goes through seeing his entire world destroyed, and it's done as a joke. Well, at least the foundation's good. No, that's heart-wrenching, horrible stuff. Also, Thor Ragnarok is a wonderful Guardians of the Galaxy movie or a fun spin-off movie. It has nothing to do with 
Thor. If you got somebody who says, oh, I've never seen Thor. I want to go, you know, you see that movie. You're like, wow, Thor's awesome. I want to go and read about Thor now. That character never appears anywhere. Also, not only that, but during that time in the comics, Thor was a woman. So any potential people that you're like, wow, Thor's funny and awesome is going to go and get a rude awakening. While Jane Foster as Thor is awesome, this is going to set people up for failure. Main characters that were left behind, Idris Elba as Heimdall. In Thor 1 and 2, he was up and coming star. In number 3, he is a bona fide star, and they wasted him. The Executioner, who is a wonderful, rich character who is a badass warrior, is a janitor. He straight up says, I'm the janitor. It's a joke. Where, and in the very beginning of Thor, where is the story where he talks about like, oh, I went looking for the Infinity Stones and I didn't find them and I got into a big battle and now I'm here. I wanted to see that, not this junk garbage. You talk about bad writing, that's bad. I'm good for this moment. <laughs> So we're, we've heard our two big arguments, and now we're going to go into a back and forth uh, debate section. Are you sure none of you want to bring up Iron Man 3? Like nobody wants to talk <laughs> about the Mandarin's revealed to be a fake with a fart joke, which no one remembers but me, I think. He comes out of the bathroom, and Iron Man, who's not there, but Tony Stark with a gun because it's Lethal Weapon 8, is there um he goes don't go into that toilet for 40 minutes and he said well i'm magical and it's like i sat in the audience and i was like i could throw my soda at the screen like i'm okay i'm cool with that uh you get to a certain age and you're like i don't give a shit if if i get thrown out of this theater for life also iron man 3 incredible hulk that's low bearing fruit you need some real like you need somebody to look at and go Oh, they're arguing homecoming? Okay, well then obviously somebody else is going to get... Oh, and re what the fuck? Have these motherfuckers never even seen these goddamn movies? Have they not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp? What's so magical about that movie? What's so great about the Incredible Hulk? You brought up a really good point of uh, music and soundtrack. I like to bring up with the music is that even bad comic book movies have sometimes have good music. You think about Batman versus Superman, objectively a terrible film, but the first time Wonder Woman jumps down and her, her theme kicks in, like even knowing it was coming because I have a really big issue with how um, that movie was advertised, but even knowing it was coming when she did that, I was like, oh yes. And, yeah. But there was never that moment in Homecoming. Just so your biggest complaint, the thing that just destroys this movie and makes it horrible, is that the soundtrack wasn't the best ever? Oh no, this is this is a very small asterisk at the bottom of the list. My I, Honestly, my biggest point is the humor. When he first finds out Peter is Spider-Man, and they're walking down the street, and they see the aftermath of that fight scene from the night before, and it's like the fire department, and it's supposed to be this really tense kind of scene, it's like, oh wow, this is real, that was my friend in there, and then Ned goes, do you like eggs? What the fuck kind of line is that? Okay, so I got a later, for it, or, I like to point. So you're you're bringing up a point that that joke fell flat. What about a joke that destroys a character? What about the joke of the executioner, who is a badass warrior, standing there with a shake weight? Are you kidding me? Justify that. Tell me how that's like. Yeah, man, I'm so man. I'm glad I saw that. A lot of people disagree with you and like they, they think that that movie is good and funny. And while it's not really my place to agree or disagree with them, that I know a lot of people that liked it. Both movies that you guys are talking about, audiences liked both those films. Their uh, critics liked them. They made money. Uh, why do you think, I would like both of you to go, why do you think people liked these movies that you both think are bad films? because it's not a Thor movie. The first two Thor movies are good representations of the Thor comics. The Thor comics do not sell well. So what they did was they went, okay, we're gonna take like that Guardians formula. We're gonna make jokes and everything like that. And they threw in all kinds of jokes because they had nothing to lose. It's just like with the Guardians where they were like, if this bombs, we can just say, well, screw it, who cares? Nobody cares about Gamora. They did that with Thor. We're going to take all these Thor, the Executioner, uh, Korg, and Planet Hulk storyline. We're going to throw it out there, and we're going to throw all these jokes out there. And if it bombs, we can be like, well, so did the other movies. They had nothing to lose. So people went in, and they were having a fun ride with it. 
but the problem is is that it destroys everything else that had been set up before the thor that returns in any movie afterwards like when the the next time they see iron man or cap is not the same thor that left and at no point in time i mean this is getting into other movies do they go back and go hey thor why are you like he's making jokes and quips and stuff like that oh you copied my hairstyle and stuff like that that i would be like who the hell is that guy like something drastically has changed and they don't do that with the other movies you go from iron man one two and three it's still pretty much the same line you know maybe sad depressed tony stark whatever you look at spider-man you could say spider-man's a carryover from any other spider-man that you've ever seen it's something you've seen in norm hey derby kid if spider-man would have come out and then just all of a sudden i don't know maybe been emo and like dancing and like doing weird kooky shit where would you come up where would you come up with that thor where does that come from yeah that sounds ridiculous who would who would green light that (laughs) i've never heard of that before i why did audiences critics and audiences like it because it was safe they took no chances they did nothing really interesting like the most interesting thing they did was cast michael keaton as a character in the movie like michael keaton is like the only redeeming quality of that movie. See, just seeing him on screen is like, oh, hey, isn't that Batman in a Marvel movie? It was fantastic. <laughs> but that aside, they took no chances. There was no, there were no real stakes. They're part of Thor Ragnarok? Yeah. Max a DC guy, so you're gonna be barking <laughs> up the wrong fucking tree here, man. No, uh, Thor Ragnarok, um, I actually really enjoyed Hela. Like, she was a great, I believe she was the first female main antagonist, and she did a hell of a job. She was great. Boo! Boo! <laughs> that was terrible. Oh, okay, that was terrible. That was unintentional, but terrible. Comes <laughs> Yeah, hell is a great, like, she's a great uh, villain. I think Kate Blanchett did a great job. Reg- I mean, it's Kate Blanchett. She's going to do, I think, a great job no matter what she was doing. But look at any of the other villains that are in it. Surtur. I don't know what your familiarity is with the character or anything like that, but that's the head motherfucker. That's like doomsday for all of Asgard. Like Odin and Thor go toe to toe with this dude and it's a standstill. And in the movie, he becomes just a joke. Like he's in the, Thor's in the realm of Surtur and he's waiting for Thor to spin around and whatnot. He is like high level boss material. And he's like, this is my crown. It's not my eyebrows. It's clearly it's my crown. He wouldn't like. You'll never see a comic book where Surtur's like, no, this is my crown, because <laughs> they ruined the character. Is it funny? Sure, yeah. If you've never seen anything dealing with Thor, yeah, you might get a chuckle or two out of it. Whereas, like, if you go to villains, Michael Keaton as the Vulture. The Vulture is a garbage character. All of Spider-Man's uh, Rogue Galaxy. Gall- uh, gallery is pretty garbage. Yeah. It's supposed to be an old man in a feather suit. It's, a, it's that, a glider suit he invented to make money. That scene where he's uh, in the car and he turns around and he threatens Peter, that's where you see a villain. You watch that scene and you go, this motherfucker's gonna kill some, like, yeah, that's a bad guy. Thor just, if Thor doesn't even beat Hela, Surtur does. Your main villain doesn't even get killed by the hero. The hero is off running, literally running away, going like, oh, there goes my home, there goes my sister, there goes the biggest villain ever, there goes my land. Oh. That's how you, it, like, there's no triumph at the end. There is, you don't leave that movie going, good job, Thor, like, you saved the day. You go home, so I'm like, Thor's kind of a punk. Like, he didn't do shit. What's the worst scene in your movie? The worst scene in my movie? Yeah. Um, honestly, the scene with the shocker. He's like, this is right after the prom sequence, right after that scene with Michael Keaton you told him about. And Peter's like, no, I'm going to be Spider-Man. And he goes and he gets a suit and he runs outside and shocker punches him. And it looks like it's going to be this really great fight scene. And then the, like, what is it? Ned or maybe his little girlfriend who's not a girlfriend until the sequel like uses the web shooter and sticks his hand to the bus and then you never see him again it's just the one hand that's stuck and he has this really high tech tech that he, and he's at a school this is a clear and present danger that they ignore for the rest of the movie like that is the worst scene it's a wasted potential for a character for Thor Ragnarok like I think there's a plethora of scenes I've already talked 
the executioner and the shakeway and the whole destroy I think it's garbage and it's horrible one of the moments that I'd point out that not only is dumb but is out of line of the character in mythos and how he's acted the entire time when they bring Thor up uh, to the Grandmaster and uh, they melt that dude his co uh, the Grandmaster's cousin or whatever Thor turns and goes oh my god who the fuck is Thor saying my God to? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, horrible. That is detrimental to the entire mythos, the character. Uh, yeah, it's funny to be like, oh, ha, 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 oh my God, but at what cost? Oh, going forward, does either of these movies going forward help or hinder the character? From what I've seen from Spider-Man since Homecoming, They've just progressively written him dumber and dumber. You know, like Infinity War. It smells like a new car in here, Mr. Stark. Shut the fuck up. Um, Endgame, when he goes in the spiel, hey, do you remember when we were in space and then I got all dusty? Shut the fuck up. Um, in uh, Far, From, Far From Home, there was a scene where he's supposed to like reminiscent. He's like building his suit like Tony Stark and Happy is like, here, let me turn on some music and he's back in black. Oh, I love Led Zeppelin. Shut the fuck up. It's, they're writing... Peter Parker progressively and progressively stupider. And I really don't like it. Going forward for Thor, you know what? That's cool. I'm with it. And he takes off. You know, he didn't transform like I was in my heart was truly hoping. I was hoping when he powered up, he's going to be muscular Thor. He's going to be that hero. And he didn't. And it was shocking at first, but I want to, I want to continue to see that adventure. I want to continue okay. to see that story. What I'm kind of hearing is that you're, while you're sad that your Thor is dead, you are still excited to see what the new Thor has in store. I can't say the same for my Spider-Man. This is, like, at the end of Far From Home, the post-credit sequence, which finally had J.K. Simmons, thank you, um, they revealed Peter Parker's identity, and that's really uncommon in the comics, so. Except the time that he did that for Iron Man. Yeah, I think they're going with the Civil War. <laughs> writing which in fairness in true marvel fashion was a big plot point and then they threw it away the next year but here's the thing if we want to go with the movies that we're talking about we're talking about at he asked you know afterwards yeah you know mm -hmm. through infinity war there's more at the end of ragnarok i did not want to see any more thor like i this is garbage i don't want to see what's going on like thanos shows up you know or and it, even that's a joke I have a feeling everything's going to work out. <laughs> what would you like for everybody watching this video for future years and years to come to get across to other geeks who might actually like these films? What you like is subjective. I'm a fan <laughs> of Batman vs. Superman. I know it's objectively terrible, but I still enjoy it. But... What I'm trying to argue is that of the MCU, it is the weakest link. Thor? To the future generations of geeks and nerds and despots and anybody else who may see this sometime, you can enjoy whatever you want. It's okay. That's fine. I'm going from my personal experience and stuff like that. But if you care about a character at all, and then you watch that character not be represented and you watch everybody else just fall in love like, oh, it's the best thing ever. It's heartbreaking because then you're not watching a movie about the character that it's supposed to be about. It's just this random thing that uh, like they're pandering to make money or to uh, get them over like in wrestling. They're just shoving it down your, oh, well, we'll just give you what you want. And, uh, look, he's making jokes. Are you laughing? Yay, you like me. You really, really like me. They don't. They like what you have pretended to become. Um, and then they just ran with it. And it's unfortunate. I know that Thor doesn't translate well to movies and he's not a huge comic book seller. And that's okay. But if he's going to be part of your universe, make him part of your universe. Spider-Man showed up and he was wearing Captain America's outfit and uh, he was very stoic and sad. You'd be like, what the hell happened? You know, it doesn't fit the character. And that's unfortunate. The Iron Man 3, I, the, I think one of you said it was the worst movie. I forgot who said it. Somebody said it. I remember that. The Iron Man 3 is the worst movie. Remember that movie. time when it was three of us debating this two-person thing? Yeah. In general, you talked about the bad writing. I don't think the writing was a problem at all. I think there was some good jokes. I believed the character. I believed 
the teenage angst and wacky adventures he was going into. Um, I don't think anything really fell flat. You're talking about the shocker. I think that builds up to something going on later on down the road. The post credit scenes, they set up Sinister Six. They gave you a gut punch of like, Aunt May knows who Spider-Man is. In final, what I would say about Thor is Thor is the sucker punch of the MCU. A crazy trailer that got you like, yeah. And then you went and watched the movie and went like, ah, oh, what the, f man. Now I hate everything. How the characters were received in the, in the movies before, something had to change. You, these characters had to change. They had to be brought into a way that, ca that people would like. And whether or not you individually don't like it, doesn't really matter unfortunately especially for the juggernaut that is disney they're gonna go with what makes money not with what makes fans happy unfortunately so while you may not be happy with with thor ragnarok and you may not be alone in not being happy with thor ragnarok this is the future of thor unfortunately going back to spider-man homecoming all i can see for the future of spider-man if Sony and Disney don't get into their little cat fight like they do every few, few years about the character, um, all I can see is his writing getting progressively worse and Tom Holland eventually becoming Peter Stark or Tony Parker or some stupid fucking conglomeration of... Like, the Iron Spider was neat in Infinity War and Endgame, but that's not the character I paid to see. All right, so that's the debate. Tell us what you think in the comments down below. Which was a worse Marvel movie? Is it Thor Ragnarok or yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming? I believe somebody said Iron Man 3. Uh, tell us yeah, in the someone comments. Someone had no opinion that was justified in this video? Yeah, I, I believe yeah, that's I, yeah. I think I, it's almost like one of you wanted to be a part of this debate but wasn't. So You, kept you know how debates go when the moderators become the third person? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like somebody, somebody who didn't get invited to the party, who's like outside, like trying to force their. You're like the parent who set up a party for their kids and then just kept walking downstairs, like, "Hey yeah. guys, what's going on?" <laughs> and then, like, the kids were like, "Dad, get upstairs." You're like, "Okay, but if you need anything, I'd rather." Yeah. So, yeah. Tell us in the comments down below. All right. Bye. bye. Isn't that the bottom of the barrel? That's the bottom of the barrel, the Emoji Movie. I don't know. I think Jack and Jill kind of beats the Emoji Movie, but we don't talk about that movie. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, when I seriously, seriously, when I think about it, like, oh, it's Jack and Jill. So Al Pacino's a Dunkin' Donut salesman in that one who wants to fuck Adam Sandler. That sounds better than the Emoji Movie. Like, if I'm <laughs> explaining that to somebody. A set of a woman tries to fuck the water boy. Bit and there was an actual Spider-Man spoon in oh, my fucking mouth. Oh, hey, I got a quick question. Mouth. Are yeah. you part of this debate? No. Nope. Get the fuck out of here.